Welcome to my channel. I'm Gauthi Jade and join me on an adventure while I attempt to make a Super Mario World themed crop top. It will have crochet and sewing elements. So I'm very confident in my crochet ability to, uh, abilities. It is my sewing abilities that I question specifically when it comes to sewing machines. I actually feel pretty confident when it comes to hand sewing. I'm just uh, not knowledgeable when it comes to stitches. So like once I learn a stitch when I hand sew, like I'm pretty good at it. It is my sewing machine that I'm still trying to better understand. I haven't used it in a while. It's been years. So this will be the first time I've done a project with it in a while. And it's better, you know, getting a better understanding of like having a good rhythm with your sewing machine is what you want. Um, setting the correct tension, uh, putting the correct pressure on the pedal. I basically uh, am still getting a better understanding of my machine, getting good rhythm with it and not trying to like go SpongeBob at a driving exam on the pedal. I don't know why I kept doing that when I first started to like do, I did a few test runs with the machine. Like I didn't want to start a project not knowing anything about my machine. Well, I used to know things about it and then I stopped using it and then I forgot. It is not ever, it's not a muscle memory for me. It's not like riding a bike. I need to read a manual and practice a bunch. So I did some practice piece, pieces and like, I just kept flooring it every time I kept sewing on the machine and I don't know why. This is giving me very SpongeBob at his writing exam. But anyway, I've always had a love of Nintendo and especially Mario games. Uh, fun fact, the very first game, like video game I ever played in my entire life was uh, Mario 64. And I actually still have the cartridge right here. Um, it is beat up, but it still works. I just don't have a console anymore. <laughs> I do want to get a console so I can like play it again because it's fun. I do have the remake for the DS. I don't have a Switch. So yeah, I just play original DS games if I play Nintendo games. Um, I have a Wii, but I don't really have that many games for it, unfortunately. So I'm more of an old school Nintendo player. I don't have a lot of the current consoles. I mainly play games on my PS4 and on Steam. But the great thing about the older games is you can like find a lot of them online for free. So basically I'm on a Mario high from the recent movie that came out. I really enjoyed it. There were so many Easter eggs that me as an older Mario fan loved seeing. Um, also shout out to the YouTube channel, The Men Talk. I binge watched all of his Mario lore videos, really good. I'll link the channel down below. Uh, so I was looking through my fabric and found Super Mario World fabric and wanted to make something with it. <laughs> I'm also working on a crochet cosplay that is Mario related that I will talk about at the end of the video. So since the fabric is Super Mario World themed, I thought why not get reacquainted with a game I hadn't played that specific game in a really long time. I remember it vaguely um, uh, when I owned it on Game Boy Advance, but yeah, I hadn't played in a really long time and realized, wow, it is a lot harder than I remember. I was messing up at first because I was getting used to the controls because I'd never played this game with a PS4 controller. I will always try and play with a controller when I play games if I can. So yeah, when I had connected my PS4 controller, it linked up. However, it didn't really tell me what was what, so I just had to figure it out on my own and was messing up and dying as a, a result. But then I was just messing up because it's a lot of very tedious, well-timed jumps. But yeah, watch me uh, epically fail this game and continuously retry the same levels um, while I make a crop top. So I crocheted one bra cup with scalloped edging. I'm just making another one to match. It's really easy to find uh, patterns for free online of a basic bra cup and also for scalloped edging. Uh, there's free ones on Pinterest and here on YouTube. I got mine off of Google. 
I'll try to remember to link both those down below. But yeah, I really enjoyed getting reacquainted with this game. I really like the design of it as well. It's really cute and just nostalgic, aesthetically pleasing. And uh, I feel like a lot of times like Yoshi games are just really uh, comforting. Like Yoshi Island is one I like to go back and play. Um, I really wish I could have played Yoshi's Woolly World. Uh, obvious, for obvious reasons, it's all crochet, like wool-based uh, everything, like the monsters, the landscape, Yoshi, everything is crocheted uh, in wool. And uh, the team that actually made the game uh, made some like practical models, like uh, dioramas of the different levels. I would love to do that on this channel. Oh, yeah, this was a sucky part. I accidentally jumped off of Yoshi and I can't jump low enough to get back on him. So I just keep going back onto the platform. So I had to leave him behind. But yeah, Yoshi's Woolly World was only on 3DS and Wii U. I never had either of those. So unfortunately, haven't played that. But um, another comforting game that I really like, I don't know if some some of you have played it before, is Fez. For anyone who's like interested in checking it out, it's pretty inexpensive on Steam. So like I said before, I uh, never owned a 3DS, but I did own the original DS that came out in 2004, and I actually still have that same exact DS. And the Mario games that I have still for the original DS are Wario Master of Disguise. I know it's a Wario, not Mario game, but I'm basically counting any game that would be in the Mario universe of characters. So aside from that, I have Super Princess Peach. Such an underrated game. So good. Uh, I, am, I hope they remake it. Uh, um, there actually was a, a big... Mario um, release of new games from Nintendo. One of them is a still in the works secret Princess Peach game. So there is going to be a Princess Peach game. We just don't know what it is yet as of when I recorded this. I also still have Super Mario DS, which is the DS version of Mario 64. It's really good. Or, well, it's Super Mario 64 DS. I left the 64 out of the game name. Um, and then the other game I have is Wario War Touched. I'm pretty sure that came free with the purchase of the DS. It's a really good game. I think it was like one of my first games that I played. It's a, um, it, re it reminds me of a lot of <laughs> different um, like phone apps put into one game. A lot of mini games, but fun. I also still have some Game Boy Advance games because my uh, DS fortunately plays the uh, Game Boy Advance games, which yeah, I'm pretty sure they all do. But fortunately, this one does. I mean, because it is like the first one that came out, so it doesn't do all the things that the other ones do sometimes. Yoshi's Island, Super Mario Advance 3, such a good game. Then I also have Mario and Luigi Super so Superstar Saga. That's where like they team up. Um, what I find interesting about this game in particular is it has a turn-based fighting style, which I really appreciate because that's something I really like in games. Uh, a game that I really like the turn-based fighting style of is Final Fantasy. I really dislike that they took that out of one of the, some of the more recent ones. I haven't played the most recent Final Fantasy, but the last one I played I think was 12, and yeah, that, they took out the turn base, which made me unhappy. I also have Super Mario Advance 4, Super Mario 3 Bros. I have more Game Boy Advance games, but those are all the ones that I have that are Mario World, or Mario themed. Um, like I said, the very first game that I ever played was Mario 64. And two games that I still have 
from my very first 64 system is uh, Pokemon Puzzle League and Pokemon Stadium. Both really good games. However, two games that I wish that I still had um, is Donkey Kong 64. That's a game I could play over and over again. So good. And also um, Mario Smash Bros. Oh, Mario Smash Bros. for the 64 is so good. I still remember to this day, I brought it over to a boyfriend's house when I was in high school and never got it back, and I'm still bitter about it to this day. So now I'm just finishing the scalloped edge of the second bra cup. Just cutting the little end off. Now I have them both finished, and so now I can use this red lace to pin onto the edges for when I run it through my sewing machine. Also, sorry if you can hear any skipping or see lag in the gameplay. I'm playing with my laptop and it plays video games fine. It's just that it's not a gaming laptop. So when I try to record myself or stream, that's usually where I run into trouble and run into some lag. So sorry if you noticed that. Um, almost done pinning down all of the lace and so now I'm going to move on to actually sewing it on. I'm still getting acquainted with my sewing machine so I do an adequate job to attach the lace however my seams on the back could definitely be neater. I need to figure out tension and pedal pressure. Um, I think most important is just the getting the tension right with the machine because like the front is fine and then the back is usually a, like all bunched up and messy but it's good enough for it to stay to the yarn so it's not really a big deal to me. I basically think in a Victorian way when I'm making this so for those that don't know with a uh, lot of historical Victorian sewing. The thing that's important is the outside. Does it look okay versus is the inner seams pretty? So basically my inner seams are Victorian ugly and my outer seams are Victorian pretty. So that's all that matters. Um, <laughs> a lot of times people will think that like, oh, p people throughout history or especially Victorians because they seem so much more uptight are very precise with things. Uh, but the average Victorian really cared more about how the uh, garment looked on the outside versus whether the seams and the inside were pretty. A lot of times the insides looked atrocious because they would reuse fabric and um, kind of transform older garments into something more current. So it would look like a Frankenstein of a garment on the inside while looking current and pretty on the outside. So I went across the underside of each cup with a row of single crochets to attach them and now I'm just going back across with the scalloped edging that I had originally added on each cup. I want that same edging along the underbust as well. I do uh, vaguely remember playing this when I was a kid, but I think the game that I remember most playing is definitely Mario 64. Um, I replayed that game so many times and it just had so many like surreal uh, landscapes to it like that um the two paintings that were across from each other that were the same but one was really tiny and one was really big so if you went through the really big one you can't you went into the world really tiny and then you went in really big in the other one i believe and um oh that level i forget what it's called but the one where it, it's like water and then you drain it and there's like spiders uh like enemies that are like on top of the water that level is so surreal um it reminds me of this online aesthetic called uh, liminal spaces 
So liminal spaces are the subject of an internet aesthetic portraying empty or abandoned places that appear eerie, forlorn, and often surreal. Liminal spaces are commonly places of transition or nostalgic appeal. And I definitely think wet dry world has that eerie, surreal feeling. Especially because at the bottom of the world, there's these random, what look like houses. So it looks like there's an abandoned village at the bottom. So you're either running through an abandoned village or swimming to the bottom of this world. And then there's an abandoned village, like a sunken uh, Atlantis of sorts. So uh, now I'm just pinning some mesh with elastic attached to it to the underbust, which will help give the bralette some extra uh, support. It's essentially red elastic with some red mesh sticking out, so it's like more aesthetically pleasing without just straight up sewing on like red elastic. Which I guess I could to the inside, so you wouldn't see it, but I like this. And now I try this over, and I just really do it quickly. Uh, yeah, I just didn't care about how it looked. It was sloppy, but I got the job done. Yay, cleared it! By the way, I'm talking about the uh, level, not the top I'm making. I, I don't- I actually care if I do a good job. I'm not trying to do a sloppy job. <laughs> so now I have my Super Mario World uh, fabric and pattern that I cut from parchment paper. And so now I'm just pinning my pattern piece to the fabric so I can cut it out. So this panel of fabric will be the main focal point of the crop top. Um, I measured how big I want the panel to be just off myself and then added a half inch all around for the inseam so that I can finish off the edges really nicely. Going back to Mario 64, I'm not the only one who has these strange feelings about the game. There is a thread about it on r slash liminal space and someone also mentions in that thread the Endless Stairs, which, yeah, that definitely falls under that. Uh, another one is the just vast emptiness of the mansion when you first walk in. There's really nobody in the mansion aside from a sprinkling of toads. And uh, something that genuinely scared me as a kid when I played that game was... Bowser's laugh when you couldn't enter a certain part of the mansion because you didn't have enough stars. There would be this maniacal laugh that Bowser would do, and it genuinely put terror in me as a kid. Like, I didn't want to go near the door after hearing that and would actively avoid those doors unless I knew I had enough stars. Sorry you can really hear the lag in this part of the video. It also happens a little later too. But also, um, you saw my cat Maurice for a bit. That was cute. He visited me. So I pinned the inseam and I'm showing you where it's going to sit when I have the crop top finished right on the underbust. And so now I'm running it through my sewing machine, trying to get the tension right. I had uh, mentioned earlier in the video that I wanted to make a crochet diorama specifically from Yoshi's Woolly World, which the game is technically called Poochie and Yoshi's Woolly World, but it's usually referred to as Yoshi's Woolly World. Anyway, I'm really excited to make Poochie. Poochie is one of my favorite characters. He's an adorable and is a dog that usually helps you along the way in Yoshi games. Um, I remember him first being like introduced to me in Yoshi's Island. So cute. I realized before I said inseam, I should have just said seam. Inseam is specifically for pants. I was leaving a half inch for my seam, not inseam. So I sewed the seam down 
and then ran the fabric and crocheted part through the sewing machine, attaching those two together. And now I'm just hand sewing that to reinforce that bond between the fabric and uh, crocheted top part because like I was saying before, um, I'm still understanding correct tension and have way more confidence in my hand sewing than my machine sewing skills. Going back to my Poochie obsession, Nintendo normally does vinyl figure releases for various games, but for Yoshi's Woolly World, they did crocheted plushie releases of Yoshi and Poochie. I definitely need that Poochie one in my life for sure. I'd love to have both, but the Poochie one, definitely. Back to the crop top, I'm using an awl to poke holes through the fabric, and I'm going to use those holes to crochet onto the fabric and add a single crochet row and then a row of scalp edging. Also, I realized not inseam, not seam alone, seam allowance. That's the terminology I was specifically looking for for what I was doing by leaving a half inch seam allowance. Inseam is specifically for pants. Seam is just the joining of fabric, and seam allowance is actually what I was trying to reference before. The seam allowance is the distance between your seam line and the raw edge. You want to give yourself some distance between the seam line and raw edge so that you can fold it in and give your project a more uh, aesthetically pleasing finished edge. Something else that will really help with that is an overlocker or serger. They'll give you a really professional store-bought look to your projects. I finished making holes around the fabric with the awl, and so now I have starting points to crochet into the fabric and add the trim of a row of single crochets and then a row of scalloped edging. Okay, so there should be a shift in audio quality. I feel so dumb right now. I was using an adapter on my mic cord that didn't need to be there and I think it was circumventing the mic so essentially I was using my PC's internal mic which is one of the worst things you can do. I feel like the audio I've recorded so far is serviceable but should be much better now. I promise this won't be a constant curse with me. In my last video I had a little audio slip up and actually, since filming the intro to this video, I've gotten a better quality lapel mic that I'm using now, which is why I was like, why is the quality jankier than the intro when I have a better quality lapel mic now? Yeah, figured it out. In my defense, the thing literally has printed on it, adapter for PC slash laptops. Anyway, back to my Nintendo TED talk. I still have a Game Boy Color. It's one of those uh, purple see-through ones. In my opinion, one of the cooler ones. I miss that see-through aesthetic from the 90s. My mom used to have a see-through landline. So the purple Game Boy I have now wasn't the original one from my childhood. I actually traded someone in high school for it. I gave them my Game Boy Advance SP because at the time I had a DS. So I had a way of playing my Game Boy Advance games, but no way of playing my Game Boy Color games. I used to have more uh, Game Boy Color games. I currently only have Pokemon Yellow and uh, the Little Mermaid game. An underrated gem for sure. I replayed that game so many times when I was younger and I actually own that same game for the NES as well. So uh, I had mentioned in the intro that I was working on my very first crochet cosplay and that uh, it's going to be Mario themed. Uh, crochet, well, crochet, cosplay is something that I've had an interest in for a really long time, but I never really felt that confident in my sewing abilities versus my crochet abilities. So crochet cosplay is the answer. I've seen others post their uh, crochet cosplays online and I'm feeling inspired. So I wanted to pick something that would be in my wheelhouse. I'm, I would say I'm kind of an intermediate 
I, I don't think I'm advanced when it comes to crochet. I think I'm still kind of intermediate. So like, I wanted to pick something that was more so doable for my level. I picked Tennis Peach uh, from Mario Ace's Tennis. Uh, she just wears like a simple pink tennis outfit, like pink tennis dress, sneakers, her crown, a sweatband on her wrist, her earrings. It, I would love to eventually do a whole crochet gown, like peach cat gown that's completely crochet, but that would be a huge undertaking. So I wanted to start out with a simple little tennis dress that I could do. Um, I actually have the dress, the crown, the earrings, and the sweatband completed. I wanted to try and do everything top to bottom from yarn. So I'm going to crochet the socks, sneakers, um, I think there was something else. It was socks, sneakers, oh, the tennis racket, of course, and um, her wig. So I'm making my first yarn wig. It doesn't look that hard, however, it just looks very labor intensive when it comes to time. Like it looks like it's going to take a while. So back to the crop top, I'm just finishing up the straps that'll crisscross in the back so that the top will actually stay on. And here is a compilation of me dying via booze. A uh, fun fact for those that don't know, booze were based on a Nintendo designer's wife, the wife of Takashi Tezuka. And so the character was based on his wife because she uh, is normally very shy, like booze are when you look at them, but then they get very angry when you look away. And um, according to Takashi, when she is angry, it is explosive, but is normally very shy, kind of like the booze. By the way, she knows the character Boo is based on her, and she's not exactly thrilled. And the crop top is finally complete. I'm really happy with how it came out. I think it's really cute. Um, I have more pop culture fabrics in my fabric stash, so I'm really looking forward to making more variations of this style. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a like and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram, TikTok, and check out my Etsy shop where I sell stuff that I crochet and uh, some jewelry that I make. All links down below. Thank you for watching. Bye.